Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. What are we going to be talking about today? Well, I'm glad you asked. Today, we're going to be going over what's coming up next month for the NA version of the game. If you don't know this, um, NA is two years behind, and thankfully we know absolutely everything. That Not absolutely everything, but we have a pretty good idea of what's coming up, because occasionally they do throw some curveballs at us. So we'll be taking a look like, we're going to take a look like, we're going to take a look at what is coming up in May. So that's going to be today's video. I hope you like it. If you do, feel free to leave a like and tell me what are you looking forward to the most. All right. So first thing that we need to check on is what's currently going on in NA. So currently in NA, we're still doing the serial mythological theater Mississippi Mythicizers, which is going up until May 9th. The reason I bring this up as the first big thing in May is the 25 million download campaign. Now the 25 million download campaign on JP happened on May 11th through May 18th and that was in the middle of their version of the event which ran from April 27th to May 18th. That would make me think that a week before May 9th is when they would run the uh, the download celebration. Now that's just an approximation of when I, when it could be coming. So I could see it coming in at May May second, but honestly, they can move it up higher. They can move it back lower. Who knows, really? I can never guess with them sometimes. But that's when I'll say that's my best guesstimation as to when it could be coming in and when in May. They could also completely throw everything for a curveball and release it sometime in April, actually. But before then, let's talk about what comes in the 25 million download campaign. Obviously, the big thing here that you can see, it's the return of Castoria. But other things are happening inside it besides Castoria's return. So we have a main campaign where it's a login bonus. Um, for the seven days, you can get the first day 10, uh, 5 EXP, P, 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 10 5 star EXP, 10 silver apples, 10 million QP, 10 golden apples, 10 of the status up foes of attack and HP on day 5 and 6, and on the final day, 10 tickets. And the cumulative login, 200 mana prisms on the first, a golden foe on the second, and a golden foe of the other type on the third, a rare mana prism, and then on the fifth day, a crystallized lore. Some other campaigns, 2x chance to get super and great success when strengthening CEs and servants. So if you are holding on to... <laughs> All the Bunyan EXP cards that you got while getting for more Mary Annings, this is your time to actually use them. Um, and all Ember Gathering and Hunting Ground quests are going to be open. Uh, Percival's interview Interlude will release on May 17th, 2022. Requires the Sin Prologue and Percival at 3rd Ascension at Bond uh, Level 5 to actually do. There will be a retweet campaign where all Masters will receive 30 Quartz if the if the tweet reaches 100,000 retweets, obviously they're going to do something completely different for ours because ours has a combination of Twitter and Facebook. So expect something of that equivalence uh, when it's going into this 25 million download campaign. There's going to be an SR ticket. The requirement to get this SR ticket is to clear Fuyuki before the exchange deadline, uh, which is May 18th, 2024. Uh, 2024. This is again on JP time, so you're going to have to adjust it. Uh, so basically that means before the deadline, because this will last until the entire event itself. So whenever the, tw the 25 million download campaign ends, that is when how long you have to clear Fuyuki, which is the first thing you fight in the game. And the ticket receive duration will happen on ex uh, the 11th, which is exactly when this event happens. So you'll get it right when the event starts. And the, attention, the exchange period will go until the 18th for the CE, and for the servant it will go up until... Okay, so there's going to be two tickets. The CE ticket you get right on the 11th, which is on the day of the event itself when it happens for us. And then two days later, the servant version will come out. And then that also means that your deadline will be two days after the deadline for the CE one. Keep that in mind. Um, the receive and exchange duration for SR tickets is different by two days. Remember. Players can use the 25 million servant ticket and 25 million CE ticket to exchange one SR servant and one SR craft essence in the Da Vinci Workshop. Um, the servants available are a, a crap ton of them. I think basically all but the collab four stars are on here. 
Um, because even story locked ones are on here, but I think the only ones that aren't on here are collab ones, so no Miyu, no um Bridge Destroyer Lady for for some reason is currently blanking me on my mind, but I know exactly she's like the best one that you can get. Uh I can't believe I'm forgetting her name right now. <laughs> Hold up, pause. Alright, my brother reminded me. It's Fujino. She's not going to be on here, and obviously the most recently released 4-star. But some of the other ones that most recently released, like the Pretender, they're going to be on here. Hephaestion was going to be on here. And some other ones. There's a lot of like good choices between these. I'll probably have to do... I'm planning a video of some kind. Either I'm going to make it in time, and I'll be able to record it and edit it up, or I'm going to just have to do the old-fashioned way of showing you which ones I think are actually worth having. But there's plenty to pick from. Edison's also on here, because um, he has story locked. That was another one. Uh, so these are all going to be the servants available. And then the CEs available, this is a much easier choice, because these are four-star CEs. Um, I would try and pick one of the newer ones. <laughs> Or if you don't have it, uh, Imaginary Number Magecraft, because it's actually a very good CE if you're starting out and you don't have it. Um, but otherwise, for me, for example, someone like me, I already have all these up until... Um, I think even... The, maybe this Rin one, the Jewel Magic Bullet. Everything after the Jewel Magic Bullet... I don't have max limit broken, but the other ones I've had max limit broken for years. But also, the following C's are gonna, you'll need to have cleared the Lost Belt to get them, so you'll also be able to get some copies of the, the Lost Belt C's, which is, they're also pretty damn rare. So if you're someone who's actually legitimately going for a max limit break, on uh, max limit break of, um, the specific C's, I guess this is your best chance to kind of go for them. So keep that in mind. Next, some limited missions which will last until the event ends and then you can claim them and up until i think a week after the event just clear arc one and arc two main quests one time two times three times four times seven times and you'll get some quartz and you'll get some exp and you'll get some mana prisms and a rare mana prism at the end very easy stuff to do da vinci's workshop um this specific ce which is the shinjuku 1999 dragon witch outfit this will make it so that you can no longer have to pay for it, I think. That is correct. So it's free if you clear Shinjuku, and if you already bought it, you'll get a refund of five rare mana prisms. A new item, which is the Nemo free seating um, CE, which is gives um, an increase to QP and Mystic Code EXP, so 5% for both of them when max limit broken. Uh... Servant, some more second storage, which is always good, and more CE storage. I wish there was more of this already in the game. Um, unfortunately, there is not, but you'll get more for this. Hello, editing in Wokey here to actually explain what bronze apples, bronze saplings do, <laughs> because I was very confused for this. Here's what it's gonna be. So basically, bronze saplings are gonna let you be able to make um, bronze apples. And then those bronze apples are 40 AP and are used based off of your current AP. So when you log in, you're going to get three of these. And then you're going to get retroactively up to, th if you've done everything in the game, 1,300 of these bronze saplings, which you can use to create these specific um, bronze apples. Which will cost you 40 AP to do. And basically the only, uh, the, the, the way you're supposed to use this is that maybe you're just feeling a little bit tired that day and you just want to put your AP up here and it's a very easy effective way to like you put your stamina into something and then save it for later for when you actually need it when it's like time for a real grind session or something. That's what these bronze um, saplings are about and how to use them and how these bronze apples actually work. I got very confused because I was like don't we already have bronze apples and then I forgot that's not the name of those apples <laughs> they're called something else they're called um what the hell are they called <laughs> i thought it was silver bronze and then bronze again but maybe i'm wrong on this one uh let me quickly look up the to see what it is the just to see you can see where i'm talking about i'm probably copper that's what it was i've been calling copper apples bronze apples this entire time we're gonna make bronze apples 
Yeah, that's what was confusing me. I've been calling the current apples bronze apples these entire time. I haven't been calling them copper. I've been calling them bronze. <laughs> that's why I was so confused. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, now it does, because now I realize I've been calling the damn apples wrong. This entire time I thought it was already the ten apple ones were called bronze apples. No, they're copper apples. So there you go. That's how you use this. Now I'll edit it back to past Wookie as he explains more of the stuff and gets stuff right or wrong, depending on stuff. There'll be a renewal date, which these SRs will be added to Tutorial Summon. So, these are going to be the new Tutorial Summon SRs. Which is going to be Lakshimba, uh, Suna, Emiya, uh, Zenobia, Liz, Valkyrie, Astolfo, Nikitch, Cersei, N Nito Chris, Yang, Steno. <laughs> Tomomo Cat and her Heracles. I can't believe that Steno made it this long <laughs> into the tutorial summon. That's kind of crazy that she's still included into it. And follower increased, you'll be able to get five more followers. Detailed friends point gained, you'll get even more details about what, I guess, who's, what, uh, when they're specifically using it. First NP normal speed revamped. This option used will work only on servants you own. Now it will work on support NPCs as well as enemies. The receive all button, which I think we already have. Instead of manual collect, yeah, we already have this. Initial first clear rewards now shown in one screen and full screen MPs. Some of these we might already have. I don't think we have the tutorial summoning. I know that much. I could have swore we had something that reminds me of the detail friend point gain. So we'll see how much of this <laughs> is when we go into the game. But I'm almost positive we already have the mission reward receive all button. But maybe it's only for... Hmm. Yeah, I could have swore that this is already in there, but I might be thinking of the other screen, the one for your dailies. Maybe we don't have it for these yet, and maybe I'm just misremembering. Feel free to tell me. Maybe my memory is just being a little wonky on this. And then finally, there will be a summoning campaign, and for most people, the most important part about this campaign is that this is how you're going to be able to get our Castoria, which also features Bargist and Babo Sif and Percival. And there's not much I need to say about this banner. I'll probably talk about it more. But obviously, a lot of people are waiting for Castoria. This is their chance to get Castoria. If you do not get, if you do not have Castoria, I would suggest getting Castoria. Uh, she's just that amazing of a unit. And then if you already have Castoria, don't worry. There's another summoning campaign for you to potentially go for. There's one that features Miss Crane, Jean, Yang, Shuten, Jacques de Molay, and Cleopatra. And there'll be also be a rated limit up of craft essences, which is Honey Lake, Pharaoh's Chocolat. Uh, is it Chocolat? No, Chocolatol? Chocolatol. The Mystery Treasure and Showtime. Uh, everyone's favorite 3C featuring Cleopatra. And that is it for the 25 million download. This is a pretty big one. Um, it's a lot of good stuff coming up forward coming up soon so i can't wait for it next we're gonna get ready for trom the pre-release campaign part one so uh there will be interludes unlocked for unsummoned servants just like the last time it means that you're going to be able to do these interludes for these units if you do not have them and when you do eventually get them you will unlock anything like an mp upgrade if it, if they if they have one attached to it and such. So make sure to prioritize the units you do not have when you go for this. Because it's just free quartz for you to do them. And in general it's good to know kind of some kind of story stuff related to them. In the in this match it's going to have Bradamante, Berserker Vlad, Sherlock Holmes, Siegfried, uh, Dirnamud, Astolfo Ryder, uh, Kiyohime, and... Uh, Salome. So the only one that you would potentially not be able to have here is Sherlock Holmes. So that's the one I'm going to be focusing in on because this is the only one I don't have. The rest of these dudes I already have and have likely already done this interlude for them. Um, there will be some stones. The Spirit to Vein stones. Which is the thing that lets you continue a quest without having to expand a St. Quartz and stuff. Or three command wheels. 
Uh, you'll get three from login, and then you'll be able to craft some more if you just want to get through the story so you can quickly get the Trom. Reduce AP campaign, uh, the main ca main quest, Arc 1 and Mark 2, until High and Kill will be one-fourth AP. And then from Arc 2, Avalon of Fae, it is one-half AP. All free quest, one-half AP. Requirements, clear Avalon of Fae, and then only applies the first three times you clear the free quest. Uh, so keep that in mind. Some limited missions, clear Anastasia, clear Gotterdunging, clear Sin, clear Yuga, clear Atlantis, clear Olympus, clear Heinkyo, and clear Avalon Le Fay. That will get you 10 bronze saplings, 10 mana prisms, 10 bronze saplings, 100 mana prisms, 10 bronze saplings, 100 mana prisms, uh, 5 golden apples, 3 rare mana prisms, and a crystallized lore for all your efforts. Um, Constantine's Trial Quest. Constantine will finally be added to the game. You'll All you need to do to get this Trial Quest is clear Fuyuki, and then you'll be able to use Constantine for whatever funness that you need to. And beating this quest will unlock you a single summon ticket. And then the summoning campaign is just Constantine. Just saying, hey, what up, it's me, Constantine. I should have probably been released with the man banner, but I'm here now. <laughs> Uh, next, main interlude Tunguska Sanctuary release commemorative summoning campaign, because this is also going to be coming out, because they're going to do a main interlude for the Tunguska Sanctuary, because it's important to the story what happens in Tunguska, so you should know what happens in there. <laughs> Taigon Wong and Vich, uh, not Vich, uh, Nikich are going to be the servants that are going to be on the banner for it along with a limited rate craft essence of empty garden and turning of tides in the street of eternal slumber this is where i'm gonna have to throw up a big old like hey speculation time here's a speculation time there might be an additional banner to this so on the korean version of the game the korean version of the game is very similar to ours except for they're only like a couple months ahead of us i want to say maybe it's two to three months ahead now on the korean version of the game when this banner came out, when it came time for the main interlude for uh, Tunguska, this banner was also released, which was a double Vich banner featuring Tamamo Vich of Light and one of Darkness. If the, I don't know if this banner is going to come for NA. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> um to offer both of them it's also coming at a weird time because it's right after castoria now here's something important on the korean version of the game i don't think they got um they didn't get um castoria they also got this tamamo banner which is featuring the mice which was related to learning with the learning with manga collab which i don't think we're going to be getting for this but it could be a possibility but another thing that they got that we didn't get is this banner here, which is the one that features Oberon and Melusane, um, the Dino Collab Unit, um, all Saber Alter, Mordred, Liz, Saber, and Mysterious Heroine X, uh, Summer. The Mysterious, Mysterious Heroine XX. So you can see that sometimes they get banners that we don't get as compensation for other stuff, and then sometimes they get banners that are, that do come over to our side. Uh, I don't know what one of these banners would be considered i honestly don't see them doing this but if they do do it then hey keep that in mind i really don't think they're gonna do it but if they do do it know that you were slightly prepared for it maybe hold off a little bit on summoning because it sounds like this was released like two days after this banner and then they said hey yo vich time so maybe it's a good idea if you wanted to summon on this, maybe hold off two days <laughs> and see if Vich shows up. Who knows? Again, I really don't think it's going to show up, but I, I, it was too crazy of a banner not to bring up and at least mention. Um, next, the pre-release campaign part two for Trom, which is going to be a login bonus, login for seven days, get the seven quartz, and here they talk about Tunguska Sanctuary being added as a main interlude. Um, it'll cost zero rare mana prisms because, again, you need it. Limited time mission, literally clear Tunguska, prologue, epilogue, get 10 sync wards. You have to have a cleared Avalon Le Fay to do it. Um, there won't be any of the raids, I'm pretty sure, so you don't have to worry about raids and stuff. So you're also going to miss out the best part about Tunguska, but hey, there's nothing we can do about that, unfortunately. Uh, a total of seven special quests will be released each day into the Caldea Gate as part of Tron's pre-release campaign. 
NPC, NPC uh, support servants are fixed and formation cannot use friend supports. It's a specific NPC is defeated, the quest is automatically lost. If guilty is increased day by day, you can repeat the quest indefinitely, but the rewards are obtainable after the first clear only. So some kind of challenge quest kind of stuff. So you can see here available NPCs for this day one are Romulus and Constantine. And then if you at the end of this one you complete it, you get two of the beast footprints. And all of them are going to be different. And I assume all of them are going to give the same reward of two beast footprints. But let me look at the last one. All of them feature Roman dudes as well. So yeah, these uh, events <laughs> look like they get significantly harder as time goes on. I'm actually kind of curious to see this one. I don't remember this being talked about a whole bunch. But I want to check it out for sure. Summoning campaign. The one I already mentioned featuring Tai Gong Wong and uh, the kitchen in it. And then finally, that should be it. Advent Quest Part 5 will come out. This one will feature a grind CE for um, Seashells of Remembrance, the Feather, and the Heroes Proof. So those are the three that are going to be related to that. And that should be it for the end of May. No, wait. Trom is likely to release in may and not actually at the end in the beginning of june just based on the way things have kind of gone here and that's finally it for what this month of may is kind of looking like it's a little bit of a preparation of a lot of stuff i would expect a lot of things to kind of shuffle up and move around and some stuff to be released a little bit earlier the reason is is that we're heading dangerously close to anniversary and you can see here, anniversary for um, JP for this year was July 31st. That's not going to be the case for us. Ours is going to be sometime in early July. So in that case, that means that all the stuff here has to happen before. The only thing here that I think can't happen before July is that the Ukiyo release campaign, maybe. Maybe that can be released with the 7th anniversary. Because as you can see here, this a lot of things were just like weird with this released. So the anniversary goes on, and then at the end of the anniversary, that's when summer happens. Um, and then summer is its own kind of thing to worry about and stuff like that. So we're going to have some weird time stuff because they're going to have to get a lot of this. A lot of this stuff that happened before anniversary, it's going to have to be moved around and happen actually either at the beginning of June Sometime in May, maybe. And we're going to have to get that stuff. Just because, like I said, our anniversary is usually tied to Anime Expo. And that usually is, happens at the beginning of July. And that's the way it's always been. You can see right here. Like, if I look through the years of when did our um, anniversary happen? July 3rd. Next. July 4th. Next. July... July 3rd, again. Like, they've always been very consistent is that whenever it was Anime Expo time, July 6th, that's when they've done our anniversary. And that's just the way it's always been. July 3rd again. So that's when I would expect it again. Um, oops. Uh, so yeah, keep an eye out on a bunch of those things. Uh, be wary of stuff to spend because like I said that means that anniversary is actually not that far away it's gonna be May June two months away so remember that while you're spending for Castoria I definitely think Castoria is worth spending on but if you're someone who is waiting for a lot of the anniversary units that are gonna show up and a lot of the summer units that are gonna be showing up they're closer than you think they are so you don't have that much time to continue to save and stuff like that so that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Like I said at the beginning, leaving a like helps a whole bunch. Comment down below. Tell me about any of the things you're excited for, or if I mess something up, feel free to correct me so I know for a better time. I really have to get a better handling of how those bronze saplings actually work, because I don't... Reading it, I was like, I'm pretty sure you can just exchange... It sounds like you can just exchange a bunch of them for bronze apples, and that's good enough. Um... Maybe I should do a cut-in video where I actually look up what the fuck do bronze saplings do. Because I wasn't 100% sure. <laughs> so, I'll look into that. 
But that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the later one. I have some other videos to be released soon, so make sure to check those out. Until next time, you guys have a good day. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.